Alright, the number's going up. Hello, my name is Teresita Branco, the Arce sister, and uh, we're continuing with Saturn Master Marduk. This is the, shot, the start of Chapter 12, Captivity. Around noon, Barsamon summoned me, summoned me to the House of Mirrors. He was going to brief me on my new assignment. As I was going up the stairs, I saw Bruno by the door. He had a small package for me. He handed me the package and he said, take this and run. Opening the package, I saw a small case of provisions and a bag full of coins. Perplexed and angry, I said, you just want me to run away? I can't say much, but after today we are to kill you on sight. He tried to drag me down the stairs and he added, there's a horse just below that breeds a little turn that leads out the city. Take it and get out of here and don't ever come back. Do you remember when I asked you if you will face Bersame at my be behest? I asked him, smiling. Why do you think I'm helping you? He will kill me for sure when he finds out that I'm helping you escape. He said, urging me on. There's no reason for you to panic. Bersame is just curious about me. That is all. Once he gets over his curiosity, things will go back to normal. And besides, the king has a pendant that I need to destroy. The pendant has the essence of something dangerous. I can't say more. For now, I want you to take care of the others. Resigned, I went to the Hall of Mirrors. There I waited for a with all the others assembled. They were all completely armed as if ready for a showdown. As I walked towards the throne, I noticed that behind each column he saw one with a bow and arrow. Seated at the throne, there was Bersame. Once again, he was wearing the Power Stone necklace. I smiled to see, to see it outside once again. I found it hilarious to see how Bersame had recovered his precious little power stone from within himself. As for the rest of him, he Can was... Can you poop it? <laughs> That's a joke. Okay. <laughs> well, he could either poop it or puke it. Okay. <laughs> Your choice. And it's ambiguous. Whatever. Or he pulled it out by, by putting his hand and got it. Uh, I think he pooped it. Yeah. Because you didn't mention that he was melted. That it was smelly. Uh. As for, he was wearing a kingly outfit, not his usual armor. He wore a red velvet case held together by two medallions hinged on his shirt. Below it was a fine embroidered attire too extravagant to go into details. As for me, I was better wear ready with my weapons and my armor. When I got close enough to, to the throne room, to the throne, Bertram made a gesture for me to start walking. In a low voice, deep voice he asked, Are you ready for your next assignment? I am as ready as I'll ever be, I responded. Smiling benevolently, he said, This is going to be a pretty laid-back job. job. I want you to play babysitter to my pet mage. I can't spend all my time keeping an eye on him. And while I'm away, you are responsible for his well-being. Is that all I ask? There is one more thing, added Bersame. I want you to live in the fifth tower from now on. It will make your guard duties all the easier. During your stay, all your needs will be provided for. Twice a day, I will bring food for you and the maid, in addition to other things you might request. I will also make certain that you receive the correspondence from your family. How kind of you, I said sardonically. Bertram and clasped his hands together and he said, Well, get to it. He moved his drone and he let the path over for me. After I entered, he closed the door behind me. Overnight, Bersame had made a lot of modifications to the passageway. <laughs> now the road was lit by torches. When I arrived at the tower, I was surprised to see a lot of newly planted fruiting trees and flowers. Even some of the statues of the Tower of Libra had flowers planted in their hands. Everything looked lively and habitable. habitable. I gazed up at the open roof of this cave and saw that many of the rocks had been removed. This allowed for more sunlight to enter the cave. I was surprised to see how much constructive energy Bersame had when he was in a good mood. He had made all these modifications over the course of a couple of days. When I got bored of looking at the newly planted garden, I entered the tower. Everything had been scrapped up to bottom. There was not a speck of dust anywhere. As a matter of fact, the floor emitted a faint lavender smell. The entire staircase was lit by torches placed in the female columns that adorned the walls. All the rooms in the bottom levels were locked. The one below Bertram's study was wide open. 
When I entered, I saw that the old bedroom had been relocated there. Furniture and all were placed within. Even the position of my things had been matched to the letter. This greatly perturbed and amused me. There was even a few things that were not there before. The first was an extra mini room. Mini room. When I opened the door, it had a large stub. On the wall, there were two le levers. When I pulled one, hot water fell on my head. The heat made, my, made me jump back. When the lever was released, it went back to its original position. The water stopped falling afterwards. I tried the other lever, and this brought cold water from the mountains. I mused a little at this ingenious indoor plumbing. Beside the standing room, there was, a, there was something like an ivory seat with a hole that led somewhere. At least toilets had not changed much. The next thing that was not there was a stove and a store shelf full of supplies. Most of the... It was a good thing that Bertrand had promised his prisoners three solid meals a day. Although I was not too certain if I wanted to eat whatever he brought up. It could be poison. <laughs> When I got bored of survey, or surveying my my bedroom, I opened my I opened my chest I, I opened the chest at the foot of my bed and placed my armor inside. As for my cape, I stretched it out over the bed. On the stands on the walls, I placed my stepfather's claymore, my mother's bow, my daggers, and my two longswords. Once I was disarmed, I I showered and changed into a less threatening attire. I wore some white robes that I had obtained during my during the race of the of the oven city. The robes came with a white hood. The hood, the sleeves, and the bottom of the robe were embroidered with golden leaves. I like this robe because it looked a lot like the old robes that I used to wear when I was small. Eight time? Eight minutes. For nostalgia purposes, I did not wear any shoes. I didn't see any to. The floor was very clean. I sat before the mirror and I noticed that my hair was getting a bit long again. It went as far as my neck. I was considering cutting it, however, I figured that it was pointless as my army life was over. I mused a little before the mirror. Frankly, I was not too excited about my new jailer duties. Behind my pleasure, I could see the freshly lighted fireplace burning. I stared at it long and imagined that I was my true self within it. I then rose from my seat and I went out of the last flight of stairs. The door to Benjamin's room was closed. It had a key on the it had a key on the clock. I turned the key and went within. Everything looked the same as before except that it was clean, like the rest of the tower. The desk had no odd pieces of paper within the floor. Instead it had in a corner some clean sheets and inkwell and, and a single feather. The books on the walls too have been dusted. There was one additional thing. Beside the bed, there were two new pieces of furniture. One was a nightstand with a lighted candle. The other was a vanity drawer with a mirror. As for the bed, its new red curtains were closed. I lifted one and peeped inside. In the, in the near darkness created by those curtains, I saw a figure resting on one side of the bed. The figure was sleeping in a fetus position. He rested his head on one of the pillows. I opened the curtain more and saw that it was the mage sleeping within. He was wearing robes identical to mine. It seemed that Bersame too had a flavor for elven fabrics. The mage seemed to be sleeping. His breathing was relaxing and irregular. One of the hands that showed one of the hands that showed had the marks of the robes of robes. I closed the curtains and allowed him to sleep some more. While he slept, I started looking to Bersame's library. The first book that I got, I threw it out the window. It magically appeared right in, right in its original spot. I threw the book out the window and then it manifested back where it should be. I also tried throwing, in, throwing the book into the fireplace with similar results. First I made to very good care of his literature. Just to be certain, I ripped up one of the pages and it regenerated on the spot. I read through the books. Most contain a lot of magical or, sto or stories about magic. Oh yeah, uh, the, the thing? 5 minutes, 30 seconds. A random person came with two trays of food. He saw me reading one of his books while sitting on the sofa. He smiled and asked, found anything useful? I closed the book and said, hardly. 
He placed both trees on his desk and then he looked inside his bed. Seeing the maid, seeing the maid was still asleep, he diverted his attention to me. Perplexed, he, he asked, How long does he plan to pretend to be asleep? Until you leave, perhaps, I responded. He growled in anger and he said, What? I did not even touch him. I was a complete gentleman, cleaning the tower and decorating. Why is he so afraid of me? Really, and I said, is that a rhetorical question? Or did you forget that you just butchered all of his apprentices? Right, right, pardon me. He said, looking in the direction of the bed. Had I know, had I only known what he looked like, I might have been inclined to show a bit of restraint. It's a bit too late for that, don't you think? I remember, I said to Bert Summer before opening the book again. I then added, what for lunch? One tray has lime chicken, bread, corn, rice, and meat. The other has rabbit soup, bread, and some strawberries. You're beating the chicken. The soup is for the meat. He then went to one of the bookcases and got from the top a wine bottle and two goblets. That's another bottle, he said. It is a bit old, but... Oh, it's a bit old, but the fact that it's older means that it tastes better. He placed the bottle and the goblets on the table, and then he departed. He returned a second later, saying, I almost forgot. He drew from his pocket a very long chain. Time? Uh, three minutes, 30 seconds. At the end of it, it had a small golden pendant. He tied the chain around the, around the waist of one of the roof tattoos, one of the roof female statues. This left the pendant hovering over her head. He swayed the pendant to have it go back and forth. He left the room right afterwards. At first, I was a bit curious about the nature of the pendant. Its women moments were a bit hypnotizing. After the first, e after the first impulse, it did not slow down. I got bored of looking at the pendant. Hunger was setting in. At first, I was not certain about the food. I got small fragments of each of my food and went towards the mirror. My true self manifested from within the mirror. He reached out to the foods I offered and he tasted it. In a small whisper, he said, it's not poison. With this endorsement, I ate my fill sitting before the mirror. When I was done, I brought the mage's lunch to my mirror for him. My, my reflection said, get rid of the bread and the strawberries. In a low whisper, I said to him, are they poison? No, but they have a low narcotic. With the food, it should kick in late at night. After this, he, after he said this, I threw the bread and the strawberries to the fireplace. When I was certain that they were burning, I returned to the mage's bedside. I lifted the curtain and saw that he had not moved. I gently shook his shoulder and I said to him in a soft whisper, Lunch is served. The mage recalled at my touch. He fled to the other side of the bed, away from me. I opened the curtain wide enough so that the light would illuminate my face. Recognizing me, he sat on the bedside before me. I placed on his lap the bowl of soup and a spoon. With his stain, he grabbed the spoon and stirred the contents of his meal. He lifted the spoon and had me, and had me taste it. Seeing his friend of mine, the second that I drank the soup, I started coughing. I grabbed my throat and I fell to the floor. Looking up, I saw the maid looking at my death bag with spiteful eyes. I said markedly, where's the love? He gave a low pout in response. He waited 10 minutes to see if I was truly dead or, or just drugged or insane. Afterwards, he ate his, his soup very quickly. Uh, time? One minute, 18 seconds. When he was done, he handed me the boat and he went back to sleep. Seeing his lazy intention, I said to him, you are not very interesting for a maid. He turned his back to me and responded, pointed to the books I said, Don't you want to read something? Bertram is a big collector, collector of magic lore, spare books, and even mages. You could learn something. Oh, yeah. Uh, 45 seconds. All right, let's just end it right here. Bye-bye.